Hi, I hated myself enough to do 285 leak code problems. I did it over a span of five months, with the majority of them being medium. The hard problems weren't worth my time. It wasn't that they were too hard or anything. I'm a junior engineer that's worked at a startup, and now I work at a big tech company. The one thing I actually dislike the most about being a software engineer is the technical interview. I guess it's more like I hated grinding leak code, but I think it's just something you have to do in order to pass these interviews. But first of all, if you don't know what leak code is, let me tell you. It's a website to practice data structure and algorithm questions, also known as DSA for short, because data structure and algorithms is way too long. It's basically Given a problem that you won't use on the job, come up with a solution that's concise and efficient. Interviewers at big tech companies love asking these types of questions, mostly because they hate us. I've seen interview questions where they're literally copy pasta lead code questions. Some interviewers also like to mix it up a bit and do some different variations of lead code problems. That's also fun to experience. There are also some other websites for practicing DSA questions like Algo Expert, Code Wars, and Hacker Rank. But lead code is the most popular and probably makes the most money. Now that you know what lead code is, here are some reasons to do lead code. The first reason is that they're common technical interview questions. Although most Mostly big tech companies ask these questions. There are a lot of other companies that started copying big tech, but you might just run into these questions when you're interviewing in general. But I guess it depends on the company. And it's not just junior roles that get asked these types of questions. I've seen it for senior and staff as well. Although coding interviews aren't all there is to the interviews, if you don't study these DSA questions, then it's very likely that you won't pass them. I haven't done Leetcode since my last job search, and if you told me to reverse a linked list, I think I know how to do it, but I wouldn't be able to code it. So if you've never seen this problem before, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to solve it. The second reason is that there are many resources available to help you learn. I didn't really know how to do leak code problems when I first started. I just went off the blind 75 and then I went on YouTube to search the solution to the problem. I always came across leak code videos and I felt like they helped me the most because I'm a visual learner. He explains the solution in a pretty intuitive way. Now that he created the unique code 150, which is like a curated list of DSA questions that you can do, there are video solutions for every single problem and they're organized in a way where it's easy to keep track of what you've done. I would say use Python. You can start slow and do one to two problems a day. Start with easy problems and you can eventually do medium. And if you don't know how to do it, then just look at the solution. Final step is to go back to the problems that you did every few days until you completely learn how to do it. That's mostly how I learned. The third reason is that you only have to study lead code when you're job searching. I haven't done lead code at all since my last job search, which was around a year ago. I think it's really easy to pick up once you've learned the concept. I don't think you have to do lead code every single day to keep your skills up to date for interview prep at least. I guess if you just enjoy doing it and you're a psychopath, then you should probably do it. I know I'll have to do lead code again in my next job search, and I think it would take me around like one to two months to get interview ready again. I just don't even want to think about lead code after work or ever. I don't even like I don't even know why I'm making this video. The fourth reason is that doing only lead code doesn't guarantee you the job, but at least it gives you a chance. Because there's a lot of different parts of the software engineering interview, like behavioral interviews, your soft skills, your personality. The interview environment itself is a lot different than just grinding lead code at home. When I first started doing technical interviews with big companies, I had no experience doing lead code in an interview setting because the only time I did it was when I just practiced at home. In the interview setting, you have the interviewer just staring you down. You have to talk through your approach and write code at the same time, which I think is really ridiculous. Because at work, I mean, that just doesn't happen. If you get asked a lead code question in your technical interviews and you don't know how to solve it, it's very unlikely that you'll pass the interview. Now that I talked about some reasons to do lead code, I'm going to talk about one of the common reasons that people don't want to do lead code. I hear a lot of people say it's a waste of time and it's not what you'll do on the job. I totally agree. I'm pretty sure I've been saying that in this video a lot. I think this is what people think when they first grind lead code and then they have to reverse a link list and they're like, why am I even doing this? Like, what's the point? But when you think about it, if you compare it to college, I would say 90% of the classes I took in my CS degree had nothing to do with what I do on the job. I know coding is just a small part of computer science, but like it just feels like all these CS classes are pretty outdated and they teach you things that are pretty pointless. I had to take math classes up to linear algebra, I've never used any of that. And I'll always talk about the assembly language class because that was the worst class ever. I guess it's just requirements that you have to do in order to get your CS degree. Just like these technical interviews, you can complain about it being pointless. They're going to ask these questions regardless. So you might as well prepare for them because I don't think they're going to change anytime soon. Lead code is something that people don't want to do. And I think when people do something they don't want to do and things get difficult, they try to find any excuse to give up and not do it. And that's totally fine because you're not required to do lead code. So now that I've talked about the reasons, I guess the question is, should you do lead code? Well, I would say it depends on what your goals are. There are a lot of companies that don't ask DSA interview questions. In my first job search, I was only asked it once and it was a two-sum question, which is like the most popular easy question. I wasn't able to get any interviews with big tech companies at the time because I had no experience. An easy way to gauge whether you want to do it or not is based on how commonly you're being asked these types of questions in your interviews. But if your primary goal is to get into a big tech company, I would say yes, you should grind lead code. In my second job search, when I had some experience, I was able to get interviews with big tech companies like Amazon, Adobe, and TikTok. Obviously, I failed those interviews. It was my first time doing medium lead code questions in a technical interview. I guess in general, I would just suggest doing lead code because it looks like these technical interviews aren't going away anytime soon and the quicker that you get started the easier it will be final question is was it worth it for me it was worth it because i wouldn't have been able to pass the technical interviews at my current job it's not just about the money though because i was able to surround myself with a lot of experienced software engineers i feel like i've been able to grow a lot because the support they give me is invaluable if there's one thing in common among all my coworkers, it's not that we're geniuses it's just that we all went through the soulless lead code grind based on my experience when the interviews are a lot more difficult the standards and the quality of work will be a lot higher but that might just be because
because I worked at a small startup. But anyways, that's all I have. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.